Okay. So if you're in for a good time tonight, raise your right arm. Oh, so, oh sorry, I can't. Anyway, Ed, let's get on with this. <laughs> Once upon a time, I used to have a factory. I had 50 staff. And I knew which way things should be done. They should be done my way because I was right. I was arrogant, aloof, and I was on this world of chasing fame and fortune. And I did quite well with that, you know, with the big house, big car, kids in private education, and, uh, and of course, the obligatory world cruise. But then one night, my whole world turned upside down, quite literally. 7th of November, 2001. It was a dark November night, and the first thing I can remember is standing at the side of the road, looking down at my upside-down Lexus, thinking, mm, what the hell do I do next? So I wandered down this road and eventually found somebody in the middle of the night. She was a theatre nurse, luck would have it, and she sorted me out into hospital. And uh, I thought I was going to lose my arm at the shoulder, but luckily I didn't, only at the elbow. But my luck ran out as my business partner terminated my directorship in the business. I got addicted to opiates for pain relief after being with them for a long, long time. And I had a huge, great frame on this arm to try and shave, save it um, falling apart at the shoulder. And little things used to really get on my way, like how the hell do you find a toothbrush that lays flat on your sink so you can put the toothpaste on it? Because I couldn't do it with my hand. Really annoying. Another thing, you know, life got down. It was tough. I thought, felt, you know, near-death experiences, everything going wrong, wallowing in self-pity and throwing the muck around. But eventually I had to make a decision. Was I going to sink or swim? And I decided to have a go at swimming. And one day coming out of hospital, I was so weak, it took me a full five minutes to, fly, to climb a single flight of stairs. And that was a bit of a scary wake-up call. So I decided in that moment to get fit. And little by little, because I get the letterbox at the end of the road, I landed out doing an Olympic distance triathlon. So that's a, a mile in the pool with one paddle. 26-mile um, bike ride and a 10K run at the end of it. Another thing is like, you know, how do you tie your shoelaces up you know, with one hand? It's, it's not easy. But for some strange dogged determination reason, I had a go at doing it and virtually worked it out. So what can you take away from that? You know, rather than the curry tonight, um, there's three things that, uh, you know, that I kind of worked out that I might be able to share with you so that you don't have to go through what I went through. Uh, first of all is, you know, take a break, take a Kit Kat. You know, it's all small stuff. Um, you know, it doesn't matter about the toothbrush, just put the toothpaste in your mouth and get on with it. You know, <laughs> tying your shoelaces. Great, some great shoes with zips on the side. <laughs> Looks like you tied them yourself. Smart goals, what are they about? Specific, measurable, realistic, time-bound and all that stuff. They're just a tool to be micromanaged by your boss. If you want to do something meaningful, then just actually set a compass point, get fit, and then take baby steps. Because you can go far further than you think at the outset. And also, the journey's never linear. You know, you take detours and go up and down the hills and get lost on, on the way, but with the compass point, you can get yourself back on track. And then I spent so long in hospital that it was a bit of a cure for arrogance because I realized we're all flesh and blood. We all come from the same place. We all go to the same place. And we just have slightly different journeys in between. And that's quite a leveler for me, and I needed it. So as a result, you know, People often say to me, God, it's really tough, you're losing my arm. And I'm kind of fairly flippant about it, got used to it. And I say, well, you know, the journey since is more than made up for the loss. And why is that? Well, again, there's three core things that actually I've learned as from that journey. And one is, you know, the difficult times force me to grow, take me to places to find deeper insights, to find more resilience and different perspectives. And we tend not to grow in the good times, so you just enjoy them. And part of that growth is, is learning to accept that it's really important to sort out my inner flame. And rather than chasing success out there when, you know, actually it's in here right now. And then use that to try and inspire people tonight. And as a result, I love myself a little bit better. I find it easier to love others. And I enjoy the moments, even though they may not be my preferences, because it's kind of all an experience. And so it's a great pleasure to be with you tonight. And way back in 1895, this guy, Rudyard Kipling, said, part of his poem, that if you can meet triumph and disaster 
and treat those two imposters just the same, then yours is the world and everything in it. I think I know what he means. Thank you. <laughs>